Hello students, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion on numerical problems on chemical equilibrium. So, let us remind you of the problem that we were discussing in the last class and that was we wanted to know what would be the pressure at which an equilibrium will be established between graphite and diamond at a temperature of 298 Kelvin. And we found that the uh, under standard state conditions the uh, delta G reaction that is the standard Gibbs free energy is a positive quantity. And therefore, we understand that at 298 Kelvin at 1 bar pressure this is not a spontaneous reaction. The, so, the question was can I have some amount of yield some uh, uh, viable amount of yield of diamond at some other pressure. So, when we uh, allowed uh, the a higher pressure we found that it is only when we have 14, uh, a little uh, uh, above 14000 bar uh, pressure that an equilibrium like this can be established. Then the question was what would be the yield of the reaction? So, yield is in general given in terms of the equilibrium constant. So, now, so the question is how do I find out the yield of this reaction at 298 Kelvin and 1 bar uh, pressure. In order to do that I understand that what I will have to do is I will have to use this particular information and the way I do it is as follows. I understand that the standard gives free energy of reaction is related to the equilibrium constant as minus R t ln k. Therefore, I can immediately write down the equilibrium constant as exponential of minus standard Gibbs free energy of reaction divided by R t. In this case, I know the value of this quantity which is given here. I know the value of the universal gas constant R and I also know the temperature at which uh, this value has been reported and therefore, I can find out the equilibrium constant at 298 Kelvin and that turned out, turns out to be an expression like this. So, all I have done is I have put in the value of this quantity from here. So, that is 2.9 kilojoule per mole. This is the value of the universal gas constant and this is the temperature at which I want the equilibrium constant and that turns out to be a number which is exponential of minus 1.1705 and that is a very small number. Therefore, as you see that the uh, synthesis of diamond from graphite is not at all a viable commercial solution at T is equal to 298 Kelvin and you find that here your yield is also very small as it is it is non spontaneous and then the yield is very small and therefore, unfortunately however precious diamond may be you do not produce diamond from graphite at room temperature. Now, moving ahead let us try and look at another classic example of use of thermodynamics uh, in one of the most commercially viable uh, reactions that are known to human civilization that is ammonia synthesis. So, the uh, question here is can I calculate the equilibrium constant for ammonia synthesis reaction at room temperature which is 298 Kelvin. So, I start by looking at the reaction of interest. Uh, here I am writing down the reaction as 1 mole of nitrogen in the gas phase reacts with 3 moles of hydrogen in the gas phase and producing 2 moles of ammonia and the entire reaction is taking place in the gas phase. Now, by definition the equilibrium constant will be related to the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction by this expression which we have already seen. Then what we will do is we will look up the chart for uh, standard Gibbs free energy of formation and then write the following. 
what is the standard Gibbs free energy of reaction for the reaction of interest? That must be 2 times standard uh, Gibbs free energy of formation of ammonia gas minus standard Gibbs free energy of formation of 1 mole of nitrogen gas minus standard Gibbs free energy uh, of formation of hydrogen gas, but I multiply it with two, uh, 3 because I have 3 moles of the reactant. And once again by definition for the pure gas phase uh, 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 elemental uh, gases, I would have the standard free energy of formation equal to 0, which tells me that in this case my standard reaction gives free energy is nothing but 2 times standard Gibbs free energy of formation of ammonia gas and therefore, I can evaluate it by knowing the value from the chart and this turns out to be minus 33.0 kilojoules per mole. Now, when I know this value therefore, I understand that I can now go back and put this value in this expression and that is exactly what I will do next. So, I put in the value of delta G dot reaction here, I put in the value of the uh, universal gas constant and this is the temperature that I am uh, working. So, that tells me that K is equal to 6.1 into 10 to the power of 5. So, that is a pretty high yield that is equilibrium constant tells me that the concentration of, uh, of the ammonia the product formed that is going to be 6.1 into 10 to the power 5 times of the combined concentration the product of concentration of the reactants. Okay. So, the next question that we ask here is as follows, can I use this result to calculate the equilibrium constant for the ammonia synthesis reaction at 500 Kelvin temperature. Now, why am I interested in this? The reason why I am interested in this is if I will be having higher yield and a better commercial viability of this reaction at higher temperature. This is what we are out to assess. So, if when I am doing this, I am trying to find out the equilibrium constant at 500 Kelvin, I use the following notation. I use the equilibrium constant at 298 Kelvin to define my equilibrium constant K 1 whose value is something that I have determined. And also I know that the standard enthalpy of formation of ammonia gas that is equal to minus 46.1 kilojoule per mole. Now, moving ahead, I have to use these information in the working formula which is the Van Hoff's equation, which tells me how the equilibrium constant depends on temperature. And if I know the equilibrium constant K 1 at a temperature T 1, I can predict the equilibrium constant K 2 at a temperature T 2 provided I know this standard reaction enthalpy for the reaction of interest. And as before R is the universal gas constant. Okay. So, here as I have already mentioned delta R H naught is the standard reaction enthalpy and here there is please note that there is a negative sign. This negative sign holds as long as I write that T 2 is greater than T 1. Now, moving ahead then I need to find out the standard reaction enthalpy. When I am trying to find this out, I know that this can be written out as 2 times the standard enthalpy of formation of the ammonia gas for this reaction. Why do I have this 2? So, as before I am writing it for a reaction where 2 moles of ammonia gas has been have been produced. So, I am multiplying 2 here with the standard enthalpy of formation of ammonia gas 
and I subtract from it for the reaction uh, the standard uh, enthalpy of formation of nitrogen gas minus the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen gas, but for 3 moles of hydrogen gas involved as a reactant in this uh, uh, equation. And once again by convention these two terms are 0 and I can write down that standard reaction enthalpy is nothing but 2 times this quantity which from the chart sta standard thermodynamic tables we know and therefore, I can find out the standard reaction enthalpy as minus 92.2 kilojoules per mole. So, now I am all set. I know that K 1 at T 1 these values are available to me. I have the standard reaction enthalpy and I am going to assume that T 2 is 500 Kelvin and therefore, I would also use this notation that the equilibrium constant at 500 Kelvin is equal to K 2. Then using the Van Hoff's equation I can write down ln K 2 must be equal to ln K 1 minus the standard reaction enthalpy divided by the universal gas constant. This ratio would multiply this term. Now, I know all the quantities which appear on the right hand side. Therefore, I will go ahead and put in all these values. When I put all these values in here, I find that what I am left with is ln k 2 is equal to minus 1.71. What does it mean? It means that k 2 is equal to 0.18. Now, as you see that there are something some interesting facts coming out from here and these are tabulated over here. First of all, I note that at room temperature the yield was very high and at a higher temperature the yield has gone substantially down. Now, is this expected? Please remember that this is an exothermic reaction. At this temperature at uh, 1 bar pressure you see that the standard reaction enthalpy is negative. This is indicative of the fact that this is an exothermic reaction. So, what does uh, the La Chatelier principle tell you? That when you try to heat the uh, equilibrium mixture the system will move towards the direction so as to get rid of the effect of the additional heat and here it is doing exactly the same by promoting the direction of reaction where there is absorption of heat and which is the direction for absorption of heat when ammonia dissociates into nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen. 2 moles of ammonia dissociates into nitrogen and 3 1 mole of nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen. So, that is understandable. Then your conclusion would be since it is an exothermic reaction then I should be working at as low temperature as possible to increase the yield, but at the same time that is something that thermodynamics is not talking about the rate of the reaction. Although thermodynamics is predicting that the yield or the equilibrium constant will go on increasing as I lower the temperature, lowering of temperature at the same time will ensure that the rate of reaction which is beyond the purview of thermodynamics that will become vanishingly small. Actually experimentally it is found that if you lower the temperature below 500 Kelvin you can wait for hours and days and there will be no conversion of uh, nitrogen and uh, hydrogen mixture into ammonia at all. So, while thermodynamics predicts that this change is going to happen it does not tell you how fast or how slow this change is going to happen. So, 
if I want to see some change within a reasonable amount of time, say within about an hour or so, I must employ a temperature which is about 500 Kelvin. So, this now brings in the question that I will have to create an atmosphere where uh, I have 500 Kelvin temperature and that requires me to burn coal for example. Therefore, when I am uh, working on the commercial viability of this reaction, whether I can harvest uh, this uh, ammonia uh, in the gaseous form from this reaction, I will have to think about the cost of heating up the ammonia uh, and the nitrogen and the hydrogen mixture up to 500 Kelvin. And even for uh, 500 Kelvin, I will probably have to maintain this very high temperature for over an hour or so and that makes the decision regarding carrying out this reaction without uh, under such condition not a commercially viable option. So, but ammonia is very important because this ammonia synthesis is at the source of uh, this large scale manufacturing of all types of uh, fertilizers in the modern day agriculture. So, is there any other way? The first step therefore, is to try and understand what is happening here. Why is it so that even if I predict a reaction to be viable uh, 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 from the standpoint of thermodynamics, I am not getting the product and that is where the question of thermodynamics and reaction mechanism comes into picture. Now, as I see that a possible reaction mechanism in the gas phase at the simplest level can be as follows. First, half mole of I am taking a very simple example. So, I will take half mole of nitrogen gas and I will heat it up so that it dissociates into one nitrogen atom. Then I take uh, one mole of a nitrogen atom, then I heat up the hydrogen gas producing 3 moles of hydrogen atoms. The next step would be one nitrogen atom combines with one hydrogen uh, atom giving you the transient species NH. Then this NH can combine with another hydrogen atom producing NH2 another transient species which finally, would give you uh, combined with the last hydrogen atom giving you the ammonia gas. Okay. And this is an energetic representation of each of these elementary steps. And as you see that this is a possible way in which this reaction could have taken place. Now, it as you see that thermodynamic tells me about the difference in enthalpy between these the initial state that is a reactant state and the final state or the product state and nothing more. But in order to understand in depth why this prediction is not sufficient to make this reaction commercially viable, we have to understand what is happening in multiple steps before the system goes from the initial reactant state to the final reaction state, a final product state. And we find that if we can convert the initial reaction mixture to this atomic nitrogen and 3 uh, 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 atomic hydrogen in the gas phase, I need to provide the system with a huge amount of energy. So, there is an activation barrier in going from this state to this state which is the first elementary step over uh, shown over here. And this is the major energetic barrier to this entire transformation. Once you form this state, then eventually the system will go on to form the ammonia uh, molecule with sub, uh, progressive loss of energy. And therefore, this is going to be totally downhill in energy and spontaneous. But here the kinetics becomes very, very slow because of this huge energy of activation that makes you 
have a very slow rate as predicted by the Arrhenius equation of rate. And this is this energy content that can be estimated and therefore, thermodynamics tells you that yes, if any such uh, step is involved, then the overall kinetics is going to be very small because the rate constant is going to be very small because the Arrhenius equation has exponential to the power of minus E a by R t. So, this is a very slow step because it requires a very high energy, but after this all there is no barrier of activation the system will lose energy and quickly get converted to ammonia. So, the red determining step is this transition and therefore, this is not a commercially viable solution. So, the requirement of heating to the uh, uh, to very high temperatures whereby you can supply enough uh, uh, energy to the system which is of the order of 1124 kilojoules to convert half mole of nitrogen and 3 by 2 mole of hydrogen to these atomic nitrogen and atomic hydrogens in the gas phase is too much uh, uh, to uh, give an input to have an optimum cost of production. So, how has this uh, uh, problem been solved? This problem has been solved by introducing a catalyst. Initially, an iron catalyst was used and uh, then you can use many other metals and uh, depending on the cost effectiveness of each of these catalysts, you actually find that once again you have the same initial state as what you had here, but and you also have the same final state, but in the presence of the solid catalyst you do not have this requirement of this huge activation energy for to create the atomic nitrogen and hydrogen. Instead what you have is the production of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms adsorbed at specific sites on the solid surface of the catalyst thereby making this entire uh, process kinetically very, very fast and therefore, both kinetics and thermodynamics are required to understand if a particular chemical process or any transition is going to be commercially viable or not. For those who are interested in the history of uh, this uh, catalysis, I would ask you to go back and read this book by Engel and Reed, uh, third edition physical chemistry to know about the story of all. So, this is all for today. So, we have discussed in detail the numerical application of uh, uh, the chemical, the concepts developed in the chemical equilibrium and I will uh, conclude the discussion on chemical equilibrium here. Thank you.